Hey everybody, I'm having a bit of a problem with my bike. I've lost most of it. I'm joking. This is Betty's old engine, as you should know. I've done a video called How Does a Motorcycle Engine Work Using This Engine, and at that point, I basically explained the whole combustion side, the timing, that sort of stuff, and how the clutch works. So it was everything until the power goes into the clutch. I didn't explain what happened once it came out of the clutch and went into the gearbox, which is what I'm going to do today. As you can see, I have actually now split the engine and I've reconstructed it in such a way that it demonstrates the whole way that a motorcycle engine works very well. It's a kind of a beautiful thing. It's almost like a sculpture. I want to keep it. Well, I am going to keep it, but not necessarily on this uh, elegant piece of wood. Okay, I'm going to carry on from the last video, so I'm going to assume that you've seen that. Um, before you've watched this one. So if I make references to it, that's the video you need to watch. There's a link in the description. I covered the clutch before. As you can see, my clutch plates are not in here and I need to remo have to remove those because uh, I want this to be free moving. I can show you now, as you see, as the engine's running, the outer basket, you see, with the uh, flywheel, all turns and no power goes through to the engine because the clutch, this is when the clutch is equivalent to you having your hand pulled in. When you let go, it starts to catch like that. See? So now, as you see, the outer basket turns, nothing happens to the gearbox. See that? The inner one is the one that makes the actual gearbox turn. So it's through the clutch, which I've explained in the last video, how that's transferred. Okay, so once it comes into the gearbox, the power's come through, and that is turning this shaft here. This is your input shaft, okay? This is your output shaft, and these are the gears which are the gears of your bike, as it were. So we've got the input shaft, the output shaft. This underneath is a selector cam. Now, as you can see, it's got little cutouts in it, and those cutouts direct these, which are the selector forks, and they sit in these, which are called dog clutches, and basically these catch on to these gears, but we'll get into that. Right, now you see this, this is your shifter. It goes through the engine, and I'll show you on the other side in a second, but it connects to this, which is a little ratchet system, which makes it only go so far, then return, and you've got a spring, which makes it go out and forth, you can see? That is your shifter. Now, I'm gonna actually have to disengage this to make the engine shift, because I found that it's very difficult when uh, everything's not being held in the exact right place. But as you can see, there's the shifter itself, down, up. So I'm gonna disengage that, get it out of the way. Okay, so at this point in time, you can see the engine is turning and the gearbox is turning. And that is because we're in first gear. How do we know we're in first gear? Well, if you take your finger on the very top nut here and the very top sprocket here, tooth, and you do a full rotation on this side, we've only done about a quarter of a rotation on this side. Now, what that means is lots of RPMs, but lots of torque, because what's happening is you're taking lots and lots of movement and concentrating it basically into smaller, more powerful movement. That is first gear. It's the same principles of block and tackle. If you're lifting a heavy weight, you pull twice as much rope, but you get twice as much lift. As I explained before, I have disconnected the shifter uh, and I'm gonna actually manually shift by hand and help turn the shifter cam uh, because it's because where everything's not in line, it doesn't move quite so freely. If I do a slight click up, and now there's an indentation in the bottom of this shifter with a spring-loaded pin. Well, that's what helps get your engine into neutral. It's a lump there, and it literally goes clonk into it. That's why you have to push so hard when you go into second, because you have to get through that lump. So we're now in neutral. As you can see, everything's turning, but the output isn't doing anything. See? Now that's neutral. So how can this turn when everything else is staying still, but it doesn't seem to have moved? Well, that is down to the selector forks. Now, as I explained, when I move that shifter cam that has those cutouts in it, it moves the forks left and right. When I turn this, see that moving? This is being guided by the fact that on the bottom of this fork, it has a pin like this that fits into that groove that's cut out. And depending on where that groove goes, depends where the selector fork moves backwards and forwards. So now we're back in neutral, you can see what's happened here is the selector fork has been moved across, which has moved this, which is called a dog clutch. And basically the way that this works is it's a little collar, which is attached onto these bars. You can see they've got striations cut through them that everything sits on. So it's locked in place in this plane, but this plane it can move. Now the way that the dog clutches engage the gears themselves is you, can you see there is this sort of cutout shape? Well, there is corresponding holes on the gears. So in neutral, the selector forks have moved all the dog clutches out of alignment with the gears, so none of them are touching. And that's why this can turn freely without turning everything else. And then as we go up a gear, they move in, and now the power has been transmitted through this gear. 
So that's basically how each gear works. It's just a dependence on the which gear is in connect, interconnected with which gear and obviously the size of the gears that gives you the different gear ratios. Now if I do the same thing I did before, top nut, top tooth, do one full rotation, it's done one full rotation, not a quarter. So now we're getting more speed out here with this turning because this is the equivalent of fifth gear. So although it looks very complicated, it's actually quite simple. You just have the input and the output and the selector underneath which decides which one of these gears is connected with which one of these gears. Now if you saw that like a derailleur on a push bike, these are your front sprockets, these are your back sprockets. So you're just choosing one of the front ones and one of the back ones. So if you understand how a push bike works, that's just an open gearbox as it were. It works on the same system, although there isn't a chain between the two drives, they are directly connected. So really clever, but really simple. Anyway, I have one more thing I want to show you from this engine, which I think is one of the most lovely pieces of engineering I have ever seen. And it also proves how sad I am. This turns, as I've said before, no matter what, whether the clutch is engaged or not engaged, this will always be turning because that is your engine running. Now, as you can see, the whole time this is going, there's this one here. Now, what is that one doing? Because it's nothing to do with the drive. Well, that is the oil pump. And I'm gonna show you how that works because this is what I mean by a beautiful piece of design. Okay, so simple plastic cog, pin to keep it in place. Now, when I first undid these screws, um, I thought I was gonna snap the screwdriver because they were so tight. Thankfully now, I can just undo them easily and not look like a weakling. And then this comes off. And as you can see, you've got a channel coming in here and a channel going out here which corresponds to a hole going in here and a hole coming out here. Now, oil is in this. Now, how does it get oil to go from here to here and be pumped round? So those two holes correspond to these two holes. And as you can see inside, you have some shape moving within some shape. Now I'm gonna take this apart and explain how it works. Now, as you can see, this bar is in the middle. That's very, very important. So then the back lifts off. And on the inside, as you can see, we have like a star shape and a square with circular corners. Now, if you watch, it creates a gap. So if you look on this side, remember the bars in the middle, it creates a gap this side. It transfers that gap across without reducing the volume because of course you can't compress oil. And then on the other side, it squeezes it out. And that's how it pumps oil from one side to the other and circulates it through the engine. This is where the pressure is created. So I'm gonna fill up this side with oil. And then when I turn it, it transfers it to the other side. And now it wants to overflow. You see the bubbles coming out? Then if we go back the other way, it takes the oil the other way. And it's things like this that I really love. It's simple, yet extremely clever and very well engineered. So there you go. That's what happens on the other side of the clutch, how the gearbox itself works and how the oil pump works. But for as simple as it is to understand, to build something like this is mind blowing because you, you have ratios here and here and then in the sprockets and you have to get the right thing coming out the back to match this. I know it's just maths, but it's really impressive. Anyway, I'll catch you next time. And now, this is the actual clutch. Under a natural state, this is compressed by sunday. these springs, I, I so everything inside is holding together. Now, if I undo them, I'll take them all out. And I have to say, Bertha has got 